All right. Questions on homework? Forty seven and fifty one. All right, let's take a look at those. I think so. Forty-seven I sent an email to everybody today. Forty Well, I can still do forty seven if you want, because I mean it's it's a fair problem. It could be something that would appear on a test. But let me answer some others first. 51, right? 51? Okay. Let me do 51 first. Oh, so I sent uh, an email out just about 20, 30 minutes ago. And I just let everybody know what they should do to get ready for the test. That's next Thursday. And what it is, I'm not going to hand you a paper review like okay here's a here's a couple of pages do these problems instead i'm just directing you to problems out of the book um to look over and if you can do those problems then you should be prepared for the test let's see how that goes all right what i'm trying to get you used to is or i guess what i'm trying to wean you away from is you have, you having to have like a review handed to you for you to be able to study for a test. Instead, let me give you the types of problems to look at. You go do those and ask questions, you know, on Tuesday. That's when I can come in, you know, answer anything that you may have on those problems or work any of those that you want me to work. All right, understand? Okay. All right, this problem, we have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And when we have that, the first thing we try and look for and hope for is a monomial in the bottom, which we do not have. And because we don't have a monomial, we must use long division, our sec second favorite thing in the world. That was terrible. All right, so inside the division box, I'm going to put the numerator, correct? I must, must make sure it's in descending order, and I must account for any gaps. What do I mean by that? Like anything that would be missing in here in terms of uh, variables. I should start with the fourth power. I should go down to third, then squared, then x, then a number. You can see right now I'm missing something, right? I'm missing a what? X squared term? So how do I represent the x squared term then? with a zero. Did I write the problem down correctly? Yes. So inside here I put 2x to the fourth plus x cubed plus what? 0x squared plus 6x minus 17. Everyone agree? Now, be, I'm going to highlight that 0x squared. You've got to have that in there if you're going to keep things together here. And a lot of times, this is the thing that people forget. Okay, so be careful with that. Any questions on that? Okay, what goes on the outside? The divisor, right? 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. You need to put that in descending order also. Now, I didn't mention this last class, um, but I'll mention it now. With the numerator, what goes in the box, you want to make sure that any any gaps are accounted for, but with the divisor, it doesn't matter. So like if, let's say I was missing the x term here, you wouldn't have to put 0x, right? It's not necessary. All right, so now we look at 
the 2x squared, and we ask ourselves, self, how do I turn 2x squared into 2x to the fourth? And using multiplication, what do I need to multiply it by? x squared, right? That's all I'm missing. I already have the 2. I just need to turn x squared to x to the fourth. So I multiply by x squared. I'll just slap that up here anywhere I want. And then this is where you had to say, okay, what's x squared times that whole thing down there, right? And we did that on the side like scratch work, which I'll do over here. I'm going to take x squared. I'm going to multiply it times 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Distributing through, we get 2x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus x squared. That's my first little piece of scratch work over there. Can you all see that all right? I just feel like it's too bright in here. Is it all right? Yes. This one right here? Okay, because there is, uh, well, I, I need to scroll up a little bit. The original problem right here, look at what happens. We start out x to the fourth, right? Then we have an x to the third. We do not have an x squared, right? We need to put our we need to put an x squared into our division box. That way when we go to line things up, we have a column for x squareds. So what we do is this is really like a zero. It's like but it, it creates a space here. Okay? And then just the rest of what was up there, six x minus seventeen goes there. That answer the question? Okay. Uh so underneath here, what am I gonna write? Everything I just got, right? So I put 2x to the fourth underneath the x to the fourth, plus 3x cubed, and then minus x squared. Then what? Add these down or what? Are we there yet? Yeah, we haven't added down yet, so we got to switch the signs of those first. So switch those signs, becomes minus here, becomes what here? Um, minus again, and then this one becomes plus. So we've got our switching of signs, then add straight down. Your 2x to the fourth should cancel. We're adding these things. So what's x cubed? That's 1x cubed. What's 1x cubed minus 3x cubed? Negative 2x cubed. Good. And then what's nothing, right? That's what this really means. Nothing plus x squared. Plus 1x squared. Right? And then what do I do with the rest of the stuff here? 6x and minus 17. Just bring them down. So plus 6x minus 17. All right. Now we go to the step where we ask ourselves again, how can I turn the negative 2x out front into a negative 2x. Did I say negative 2x squared out front? The 2x out, 2x squared out front into a negative 2x cubed. How do you turn 2 into negative 2? What do you have to multiply it by to change its sign? A negative 1, right? And then you're also missing, let's see, you need to go from x squared to x cubed, so you need an x. So you need basically a negative x or negative 1x. Is that all right? Yeah? Yeah? Negative 1x. I'll just put negative x. Then you have to multiply that over and figure out what that will be. Okay. We have negative x multiplying times 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Distributing that through, we get negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared, then what? Plus x. Have you all noticed that on the left side over here, the scratch work I'm doing, that I'm doing a monomial times a trinomial? Monomial times a trinomial? Have you all noticed that that's kind of built into this problem? You have to be able to do that distribution. Okay. So I wouldn't expect on a test for me to give you a whole lot of these, right? Because you're going to have to do it anyway later. So why give why waste time on that? You understand? At least that's my thinking when I'm making a test. Um all right, so put those underneath, right? Underneath here. 
So it will be negative 2x cubed and minus 3x squared and plus x. Come through and and change the signs. Plus, plus, and big old minus here. What do I get if I add down now? X cubes are gone, right? 4x squared plus 5x, and then bring down minus 17. Questions? Sure? Is anybody else in the same boat as I am? I have never in my life been able to do a cartwheel. I can't do a cartwheel. Can can anyone else not do? So everyone else can do cartwheels. Who can't do a cartwheel? Who can do a cartwheel? Okay, see, that's one thing I've always wanted to be able to do is do a cartwheel. You know, and I'm looking at everyone right now. If I could do cartwheels right now, I would do cartwheels to try and get everyone excited. But I can't do cartwheels, unfortunately. Y'all just look so tired right now. I'm, so imagine me doing cartwheels, and that would be pretty exciting, right? Everyone's awake now? All right. <laughs> Are we done? Jesus, problem never end. We're not done because I need to look at the 4x squared here, and I need to ask myself again, can I turn 2x squared into 4x squared? Yes. All I need is to make the 2 become a 4, though. So multiply by... Plus 2. And then I multiply this through here, do my scratch work on the side. I'll skip my scratch work this time. I'm just going to write down what it would be. 4x squared plus 6x uh, minus 2. And then I will change my signs. Minus, minus, plus. When I add down now, I get negative 1x or negative x, either way, and then minus 15. All right, we are there. Because when you look at this now and you say, all right, how can I turn 2x squared into negative x? The power here is now smaller than the power up here, so we are, we've, we've come to a stopping point. You understand that? Okay. So now I need to write my answer. This thing at the end here is my remainder, right? So my answer is everything up top there plus my remainder over the divisor. So I'm going to write, here we go. It was x, uh, x squared minus x plus 2 plus my remainder, negative x minus 15, over my divisor. My divisor was... 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Box it. Move on. Did we talk about that last class a little bit? I said be careful with that. No? Here, well, this is why. Are you saying make this minus and take that negative off like that? That's incorrect. You would actually have to change this other one to a plus right here. Because when you say subtract this fraction, you're subtracting the negative would have to distribute to both. That's why I always say put a plus there and just whatever your remainder is, throw it up here. Because if you start trying to mess with signs, it can become a little dangerous. So if you're okay with that, put a minus here and make sure that that becomes a plus up there. If not, Stick to what I told you, plus here, and then just exactly what the remainder goes up here. Yes. Just keeps coming down. It should, yes. Because division is basically reducing by factors, and so the powers should come down. <clears throat> 
All right. Should I entertain any other questions? Do you, did you still want me to look at 47? Okay. All right, so this was not a homework problem, but it is a fair problem because it uh, it's in the book, I guess. Yeah, this one's this one's a bit of a challenge. I never really gave you anything like it, but let's see how we can still apply long division to this. We do have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. The denominator is not a monomial, so I'm not happy about that. Long division is what I need, right? This is the tricky part. What goes in here? 27a cubed, right? And then you have a 125b cubed, right? Yes, yes, no, no. But what about gaps? See, this is the tricky part. What about gaps? Well, I don't have an A squared, do I? I don't have an A by itself, right? I don't have a B squared. I don't have a B by itself. So I have all these possible gaps. Do you see that? Like, if that was just, if we just had A squared and there were no Bs in this problem, we would need to put a zero for the B squared, a zero for the B, right? And we'd have all these spaces in here. So because I have not shown you a problem that has two variables in it like this, I'll just do this, see if you can follow along with this. I am going to put my division box like this. I'm going to leave space, but I'm not going to put zero anything. I'm just going to leave space, and later on I'll put stuff in as I need it. Does that sound fair? Instead of putting a bunch of zeros in there? Okay, now on the outside, what do we have? 3a plus 5b. Now, this step is the same. What do you multiply 3a by to get 27a cubed? 9, right, and then a squared. So I'm going to put a 9 out here and an a squared. But that has to distribute to each one of these, doesn't it? Like to that whole thing? What would happen if I multiply... 9a squared times 3a plus 5b. I get 27a cubed, then what? Plus 45a squared b, don't I? And now I'm going to supposed to put that underneath here, right? Now 27a cubed lines up here because it's a cubed, isn't it? So I put 27a cubed here. Oops. 27a cubed here. But I also have a plus 45a squared b. I don't have a column for a squared b, do I? So I'm going to just create in this space a column for, for that, all right? Just going to put it here. Plus 45a squared b. And then my line. Now, I don't need to write this, but technically I could imagine that up above this is a 0a squared b. Do you see that? Or you can just leave it blank like nothing's there. Now, what do I still need to do? Change the signs. Minus and then minus, right? Add down and what, what do you have left? 45, negative 45, A squared B, right? And then you bring down the other one, plus 125B cubed. What, this initially? Yeah, because where would you have put this one? 
You see, I would this one would have been right here, and I can't line them up because they're not like terms, right? So I can't add them together. So you'd basically be out of room. Well, there is that is up here, but the thing is, we didn't initially we didn't know what we needed. Like, did we need a zero a squared, a zero a, a zero b squared? So instead of trying to figure it out, let's just see what pops out as we do the long division. And so we needed a squared b up here. I wouldn't have known that necessarily. Uh huh. The fact that you're trying to turn this a into a cubed. So in order to turn a into a cubed, you have to multiply it by a squared, right? Because a times a squared, you add the exponents, becomes a cubed, right? a times a squared is a cubed, right? That first multiplication through here, when I do this 9a squared times 3a, that gives me the 27a cubed. Okay, now what? See if you can figure this out. Okay, so 3a times what gives you what? This thing. Oh, shit. Okay, so I need a negative 45, right? So that means I'm going to need to multiply 3 by negative 15. I need an a squared. I have an a, so I'll need an a. And I need a b, and I don't have a b. So I'll need a b also. So I'm going to need a negative 15ab. You've opened Pandora's box here. This is a good bonus problem, okay? Let's, let's just say that. I would never give this to you on a test as a problem that I expect you to do if I've never shown you one like this. But now that I'm going through this, this would be a good bonus problem. Okay, so what? No, it's okay. It's all right. Um, now, the next one. We, we have to multiply that through, right? What's well, negative 15AB times this? Negative 15AB times 3A plus 5B. That first multiplication gives me the negative 45A squared B. What's the next multiplication? Negative, sorry, that's so small. Negative 15AB times 5. What's negative 15 times 5? Negative 45. Wait. 75, then what? A, B squared, right? Yes? Okay, so we put that under here, right? Now, the negative 45, A squared, B is exactly this one, right? Just So I'm going to put it under here. But the other one is neg negative. Uh, negative 75, A, B squared. I don't have an A, B squared column here, do I? So I'm going to create an a, b squared column. I have an a squared, b column, but not an a, b squared column. I know your head's spinning, right? Okay, so here's my negative 45, a squared, b. But now I have a minus 75, a, b squared. And I'm going to come through. I'm going to change the signs. <laughs> Sorry, plus. Plus, that started to turn into a star. And then add straight down. What do you get if you add straight down here? 75AB squared plus 125B cubed. Oh, you're almost there. You were almost there. I think there's just one more multiplication. Yeah, there's just one more. Okay, so look. You're trying now to turn 3a into 75ab squared, right? How do you turn 3 into 75? Multiply by 25, so I put plus 25 up here. And then, what do I turn? How do I turn a into a? Well, I don't need to do anything, right? But I also need to get a b squared. I don't have a b squared, so I need to tack a b squared onto that 25. So I'm going to multiply. The 3a plus 5b out here by my 25b squared now, and good things are going to happen. I'm taking my 25b squared multiplied.
multiplying times 3a plus 5b. Distribute through 75ab um, squared plus 125b cubed. And that's exactly what we have there, isn't it? Put it underneath. 75ab squared plus 125b cubed. And then change the signs. Add down and you get 0. Your remainder is 0. So your answer is this. 9a squared minus 15ab plus 25b squared. Now, I enjoyed that, so I will say thank you for asking. I know everyone else is like, we don't like this. But do you agree it's pretty much the same thing we've been doing? Just a little more complicated expressions here because we've got A's and B's mixed in there. But it's the same procedure. Yeah. Okay, we are going to move on to, unless there are any other questions, we're going to move into the last section that will appear on the test. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with this. I think you're going to like it. My other class liked it. I, when I say that, I mean like it relative to the long division. I'm not, going to, I'm not saying you like it, like you're going to go home and tell everyone about what we did today, but it's like you're going to like it relative to, the, to what we've been doing. So it's called synthetic division. I don't really like the name they give it. synthetic division. How many of you have heard of this? Like, oh yeah, I think I did this once or something. Okay, synthetic division. When you see the word synthetic, what do you think? Man-made, fake or something, you know? This isn't really like, yeah, oil. This is not fake or man-made division. It's just another way of approaching polynomial division. And it's it's just a shortcut way. That's all it is. It's just kind of just makes things a little nicer, as you'll see, hopefully. Here's the big catch, though. Right? It's a big catch. Big star here. Only use when you have a polynomial divided by binomial. Further, it's got to look something like this as an example. Something like x squared minus 2x minus 3 over, let's say, x minus 4. We want to use synthetic division when we have, the numerator won't matter, just, you know, a polynomial up there. Down here, though, we need it to be binomial. Two terms, right? Bi. If it's monomial, we have a totally different way. If it's binomial, we can try synthetic. If it's trinomial on the bottom, synthetic doesn't work. All right? But if we do have this, then here's how we go about the problem. All right? So the best way to show you synthetic division is by example. So I show you an example, you kind of pick up the technique, show you another example, and then you start to kind of get it, all right? Here's how it's going to go. We're going to do that example right there, x squared minus 2x minus 3 divided by negative 4. Now what I'd like to do to help motivate this and help you appreciate it, I want to do this long division first, and then I'll do synthetic, right? So long division is what you would have done last class. So with long division, it would look like, and I'm going to work quickly through it because um, you've seen this. That's how I would set it up, right? Make sure it's in order, descending order. There are no gaps. Don't have to worry about it. Now I say, what do I multiply x by to get x squared? What do I multiply x by to get x squared? x. Okay, multiply that through. You should get an x squared minus 4x. 
You come through, you change the signs, you add down, and you should get 2x minus 3. Then you say, what do you multiply x by to get 2x? 2, so I put a plus 2 up there. When I multiply through, I get 2x minus 8. I change the signs, add down, and I get 5. So my remainder is 5. So I, up here at my answer, I put x plus 2 plus what? 5 over x minus 4. Okay, that's the answer using long division, right? So we've seen that. I'm going to do now the exact same problem using a completely different method, and we should get the same answer, shouldn't we? Okay, here it goes. Now with long division. Does anyone need a second to finish writing that? We're good? Okay, x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x minus 4. All right, for synthetic, and I'll do synthetic in blue. For synthetic, you do a division box, but, 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 hold on. You write it upside down. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. It's just whoever made this up, that's the way they wanted to do it, all right? They do an upside down division box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to identify the coefficients of our numerator. What are coefficients? What are the coefficients? The numbers in front of our terms. So what is the first coefficient? Now, this also has to be in descending order, which it is. What's the first coefficient of this polynomial in the numerator? There's one before that. On the x squared term, there's a 1, isn't there? So I have a 1. What's the coefficient on the second term? Negative 2. Third term? Negative 3. You must include their signs, okay? Do not forget their signs. So I wrote the three numbers up there just to kind of identify where they came from, okay? Those three coefficients get put into the division box like this. 1, negative 2, and then negative 3. And notice I left space under them. I did that on purpose, okay? You write those three numbers in this division box, this upside-down synthetic division box. Any questions so far? Okay, next thing you're going to do is you're going to look at your denominator, and you're going to look at the number next to the x. What is the number next to x right now? Negative 4, right? You're going to take, and you'll always do this, the opposite of what you see. So I see negative 4. What's the opposite of negative 4? Positive 4. So I'm going to take positive 4, and I'm going to put that right here. Opposite. Who is going to forget that on the test, on the opposite? Okay, I had two other, vol three volunteers in this class to forget it. The other class, only two people volunteered to forget it. So hopefully you won't forget to take the opposite. Yes. Yes. Okay. Pardon? There's different, there's different ways of doing synthetic. I mean, there's different styles of it, but it's all pretty much the same thing. All right, now at this point, we have set up the synthetic division. We're ready to now go attack the problem, all right? What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the first number in my synthetic division box, and I'm going to add straight down. And since there's nothing underneath it, 1 plus nothing is, is 1 still, right? So I'm just going to bring that 1 straight down. So I come down here. I put a little A next to this telling you I'm adding it. 1 plus nothing is 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 4 out here, and I'm going to multiply it times that 1. I'm putting an M there to let you know I'm multiplying. 4 times 1 is 4. I want you to take that answer. I want you to stick that answer underneath the next column. Just place it there. Now what do you think comes next? Add down again. Okay, so add straight down. What's negative 2 plus 4? What is it? 
you're adding, right? Not multiplying. So 2, okay? What do you think comes next? Multiply what? 4 times 2 again, and then bring it up. Now, if I keep drawing these arrows, it's going to start turning into a real mess. But just on this example, I will. You don't need to draw arrows, all right? As soon as you remember what it is you're doing, I'm multiplying this, right? It's not 4 plus 2. It's 4 times 2. That gives me what? 8. And now add down again, and I get 5. And I'm at the end of my division box, right? This last number is your remainder. So what we do is we put this, different books do it different ways. We like to separate the five off. The last number is always our remainder. It, and so we just kind of put this little like L-shaped thing, half a box here, so you can separate that from, from the rest of it. So our remainder is five. Okay? Now let me go back to the previous page. Look at what we had here. What was our remainder in this problem here? Blah, 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 blah. Five, right? So there, we've got the five, don't we? But we also have some other information here. Because we need the rest of the answer, right? Which was x plus 2. Is that answer, x plus 2, in here anywhere? Right there. Believe it or not, isn't 1 the coefficient in front of x, like in our, in our other answer? And isn't 2 the other number. What we need to now do is somehow interpret how we're going to turn 1, 2 here into x plus 2. And the rule is this. And this is the rule for all synthetic division. When you take these numbers down to figure out what they, how they contribute to the answer, the first number is the coefficient in front of x to some power. And that power on this x is always one less than the power that you started with up here. So what was the power that we started with up here? Squared, right? If you subtract 1 from that, right, 2 minus 1, you get 1. That's the power that you're going to have there. So what if that up there had been an x cubed? This would have been 1x what? Squared. If that had been x to the fifth, this would have been x to the fourth. And then what happens is the rest of the way, it's just descending order. It'll just keep coming down by 1. So if this is our x term, the next, the next one should have no x's, right? And that's going to be a positive 2. So you put plus 2 right next to it. And then you have your remainder. But how do we write, write remainders? 5 over the divisor. What was the divisor? x minus 4. Now, you may be looking at that going, man, I'm, I'm just going to stick with the long division, okay? Because I'm happy with long division. And that's fine. But I'm going to ask you on the test to do this problem using synthetic division. I'll try and convince you why. I'm going to try and sell you on this in a second, all right? But are there any questions? Because we're going to do another one. Your answer, you remember how you said, Every time we were doing long division, it, like the powers kept on coming down. When you do synthetic division, because this up here was whatever power is here, because this power on, is x by itself, imagine that being an x to the 1. Then your answer should be one power less. So if that's a 2, we subtract 1, that's a 1 here. If that's a 5, we subtract 5 minus 1, we should get a 4 here. I don't know if that's answering your question. Let me do another example, and you hopefully we'll see how this uh, works. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, well, I think. x cubed minus 5x squared Minus 4x, come on, Robert, think, plus 20 all over x plus 2.
So is this even a candidate for synthetic division? I mean, can we even think synthetic division on this problem? Yes, we have a polynomial divided by a binomial, and that binomial looks like x and then a number next to it, right? So it's a perfect candidate. What I need to do, though, is set up my synthetic division box, and I need to identify some coefficients. So what are the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator? What are the coefficients here? 1, and then negative 5, and then negative 4, and then 20. And what number goes on the outside of my synthetic division box? Negative two. You said you weren't. Gonna, you didn't volunteer to forget that. Who said that? Did you say two? Okay, you should have volunteered. Well, you won't volunteer on the test. Negative two, right? The opposite of what you see there. Opposite. What would happen on the test if you don't do the opposite? Everything's going to be wrong. Okay, you have to have that. You may go through the whole thing, do everything right here, but your answer is not going to be correct. All right. First step, drop down the 1, right? Drop down the 1, you get a 1. Then multiply negative 2 times 1, and you get negative 2, and I put it underneath the negative 5, right? Add straight down, what's negative 5 minus 2? Negative 7. Multiply, negative 2 times negative 7 gives us 14. Does my laser irritate you or does it help? Mm, I don't know. I've, is it irritating? Okay. All right, add down, what do you get? 10. Multiply, negative 2 times 10. Negative 20. Oh, that's nice. Because what? Your remainder is zero. Now, that's not the answer. The answer we now have to extrapolate from this table, this, this synthetic division thing. And we said the answer comes from the numbers that are here on the bottom. The first number is the coefficient of the first power of x. What is the power that I have on x here? Squared. Now, why is it squared? The original problem had a cubed, right? In synthetic division, always your answer will start with one power less than what you had started with in the numerator. So I know this is a 1x squared coming from here. Now what? Minus 7x, just x, right? Because now it's just descending order. Now the power is just going to keep coming down. Next one. Plus 10. And remainder isn't there, so you don't need to write it. Where did the x come from on the 7? Well, it, it, it all comes back to the idea that these numbers represent something, right? Like that one right here, um, this one right here really meant x, 1x cubed, right? This was negative 5x squared. This was x, and then this was just some number. And then, so this column, if we take one power down from that, this becomes an x squared. This x squared now becomes an x, and then this, that was an x, now becomes a number. Does that help? I mean, it's... Yeah, take an x away, you have just a number. So everything that was there gets reduced by a power. What do y'all think? Wait, the one right here doesn't have x, or this one doesn't have I no I don't I don't believe you're making that up but it could be possible 
that the first one here is not a constant. So I wouldn't adhere to that. I would adhere to what I said more. Whatever that power is to start, this first one, I mean, what you're going to run into in this class, yes. Yes. But it's kind of like, um, it's like that rule in English, I before E except after C. Y'all ever heard that rule? It's not a rule, right? I mean, right? It's not a rule? I before E except after C? So why in the hell do you call it a rule if it's not really a rule? If You know, if it, it doesn't apply always, right? Y'all know what I'm saying or not? Am I the only one who hates that rule? Am I the only one who doesn't like English because that one rule was drilled into my head, but every time I tried to follow it, I was told I was wrong? Guess what I'm getting at is I, I'm trying to give you a method that is going to work regardless of whether or not you're in this class or you're an engineer. You know, like there might be some cases where this, num this is not a number, that it may still have an X in there. You won't run into it here, but it could happen later down the road. I was showing this to my other class because one of my students said, "Why can't can I just use long division? I, I don't really care for this. Like, why would we ever use this?" And I brought this example up for them. Um, this is an exam that my calculus three class had. It's a take-home exam, and so they are asked to find the values of b, which makes which makes this is bad English, which make these vectors orthogonal. So they give them two vectors. What the hell is a vector? Who cares? But it all turned out to in the problem that look at what oh look what they had to do. They had to do synthetic division, right? And you can see they had to do it multiple times in order to get to the answer. And at the very end, they have an answer. So the student was you know asking, well, why can I just use long division? Well, synthetic division becomes very fast once you get good at it. It can be pretty quick, and so it's the preferred method when you can use it. And then, of course, you know, this is part of a larger problem, you know, that the engineer is trying to answer. So th this is just a little piece. I think we talked about this last class, like why are we doing this? When would this ever apply? Again, this is, uh, me, this is the synthetic division is a tool. I, I told my other classes, and it was interesting, the answers I got. How many of you know how to use a saw to cut a piece of wood? Okay. How many of you know how to use a plunge router? Okay, fewer, right? Now, if I took one class next time I come in here, I bring a plunge router, a bunch of wood, and I show everyone how to do, use a plunge router, then you'd all have that tool, that knowledge with you, right? And then you'd go build something with it. Well, that's what synthetic division, that's what all the math that we're doing in this class is. It's all about, let me show you this tool. Now you know how to use it. Later you build, later you put stuff together, okay? Here's an example of using synthetic division to solve a problem. Well, and this is is an even building. In a Cal 3 class, my answer to your question would have been, that is just part of what you need to do a harder problem later. And that relies on this. So it's all built on itself. Yeah. Anyway, okay. That looks like alien writing. <laughs> Lambda. Lambda, mu, <laughs> upside down y. Uh, that looks like, yeah, that looks like math, doesn't it? That looks like crazy math. Here's what, here's what that Cal class is doing right there. They're trying to find on a surface, uh, there's a surface. Can you all see it's kind of three-dimensional? And they're trying to find... Am I boring you? I, I can just shut up right now. I'm sorry. I am, right? What the hell? I'll give you a better a better one. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. That's the same thing three-dimensionally. I can spin it around. You can look at it. So the calculus problem is here's a surface. I give them the equation of a surface. I give them a point in three-dimensional space. And I say, find the, find the points on this surface that are closest to that. So you can look at it like, you know, you have surface of a planet or whatever it may be. You have some object out here. You want to know 
what is the shortest distance between those two? Very difficult question. In this particular problem, it's whatever I had up here a second ago. The minimum distance is the square root of 7 over 2. All right. I hope, I, again, I'm not trying to bore you. I'm just trying to kind of tell you, look, again, this is all just part of learning how to, you know, use little tools that later on become important. But I'm not the Texas Coordinating Board. I don't decide that math, you need math for any degree, right? How many of you are going to be engineers? Probably a few of you, maybe. But, you know, so why do you have to study this? I don't know. That's some, a question for the Coordinating Board, not for me. Um, why did I have to write 20, 30-page papers in English when I was, had no interest in English when I was in college? Just part of the, the hoops you got to jump through, right? You can almost look at it. Y'all been to the circus? You hold those little hoops and the little animals jump through them, right? And at the end, they give them a treat. Well, that's kind of college. You can kind of look at it that way too sometimes, especially when there are classes you don't like to jump through. Just jump through the hoop, okay? Jump through, the hoop, jump through all the hoops. At the end, they give you a piece of paper. What's that? Yeah, it is. I mean, there are a lot of weed-out classes. If you don't like it, it's a weed-out class, definitely. All right, I need to get back on task here, folks. Y'all are getting real good at getting me off on tangents, even though I'm doing it to myself. Yes. Attendance. Ah, bonus points. Man, we've got a lot of people missed last time. Wow. Is that right? Okay, we'll start this over here. Um, we've seen that. We haven't seen this. Let's take a look at this one. Thank you. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And and not only descending order, you've got blanks, don't you? You have missing pieces on this thing. And you must account for them just like you did with long division. But how do you think we account for the things that are missing in synthetic? What do you think we put there? Just zeros, right? Just zeros. So let's start with, let me try and rewrite this up here so that, you know, maybe it helps you. The highest power is x to the seventh. Then the next highest power is what? x to the third. And then the next highest power, we have minus 5x and then plus 1. You all agree? So what are we missing in there? x to the sixth, x to the fifth, x to the fourth, and x squared. So the coefficients are 1, then a 0 for the x to the 6th, a 0 for the x to the 5th, a 0 for the x to the 4th, and then a 1 for the x cubed, then 0 for the x squared, negative 5 for the x, and 1 for the 1. Do you see where all those come from? Questions? Negative 5 on the outside, right? You're not going to like me after you do this. Well, I should say you're not going to like me even more, all right? So come straight down with the 1, put it here. Now, what is 1 times negative 5? Negative 5. Add straight down. Add straight down. Negative 5. Oh, my goodness. 
What's negative 5 times negative 5? 25. Uh-oh. Add straight down. 25. Uh-oh. What's negative 5 times 25? Negative 125. Add straight down. Negative 125. What's negative 5 times negative 125? Positive something. I'm 625. Crap, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of room because these numbers are getting so big. 625. What's 625 plus 1? 626. Someone better break out the calculator. What's... 626 times 5. You got it? What is it? 3,130? Negative. Add straight down. Negative 3,130. Times negative 5, so what do you got? Did you do that one yet? 15,500, 650? 15, no? No, there it is. 650? 650? Thirteen six fifty, or fi so sixteen fifty. Ah, fifteen six fifty, and now s basically subtract five from that, and you get fifteen six forty five. Last one, right? Multiply times five, negative five. Fifteen six forty five times negative five. 78, negative 78,225. Add straight down, negative 78,224. All right, now those numbers got really big, but I, the biggest, what do you think my, my point is in this problem? What do you think the point of this is? Not that the numbers are big, there's something else. I mean, we did it in the very beginning. The descending order and replacing your gaps with zeros. That's the main thing. You always have to pay attention to that. After that, you just go through the synthetic. What's our remainder here? This thing right here, negative 78,224. Okay, what is, what is the first number that's 1? What's the power on x here? x to the, careful. The highest power was 7, wasn't it? So it's going to be x to the 6th. So I've got x to the 6th with a 1 in front, minus 5x to the 5th. The power keeps coming down now. Plus 25x to the 4th, minus 125x to the 3rd, plus 626x squared, minus 3130x plus 15, 645, and then plus remainder, negative 7, 8, 2, 2, 4, over x plus 5. I guess, you know, just make sure you got that x to the 6th came off the fact that the x to the 7th was up there, subtract 1, then everything just keeps going down by 1. Again, moral of the story, make sure you're in descending order. Make sure you account for gaps with zeros. That's ugly, huh? But it's really just arithmetic, isn't it? Multiplication, five times this, five times that. So I'm going to move on. I'd like you to practice three problems, okay? Three problems. 
let's do we are going to do synthetic yep you're tired so you said I your brain's done oh I don't know I have no idea did you Could be. Could be. There are the three problems I want you to do. Those were the answers, yeah. I'll pause my video. Are boxed. And that's all the work for it, also. Can you all see that? Can you all make that out? I know. If I, if I zoom in too much, you won't be able to see the work. Remember also, I do, um, I, uh, I post all these notes online, too. If you go to class files, everything that I write down up here is there. Okay. Yeah, that'll be there. Yes. You know where I'm talking about? If you go to class files, it says, it'll say something like, yes. Yeah, not, not, I'm not talking about the video. I'm talking about the actual, like, oh, yeah. there's a click. If you, if you go to class files and you click on today's date, okay. it'll bring up a document that has everything I wrote down. Okay. Yeah. So when we send our email, it'll have, well, no, the email won't have it. No, yeah, you can look in there, yes. I've had a, a couple other students having the same issue. Are you, um, well, let me stop this.